Hello everyone and welcome back. In the last session, we looked at how we can deploy our pods in the Kubernetes cluster, uh, which is running in EKS using the manifest files. So we had a deployment file and a service file for the product microservice and a deployment file and a service file for orders service. And once the pods were created, we were able to access the application running on this pod from the browser. Now in today's session, we are going to spend uh, some time uh, in understanding how to expose the microservices in Kubernetes. And we will talk about the different types of services we have and also a bit about the ingress controller. Once again, before I start off with the session, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. So let's get started with this. Now, one thing that you will need to understand is that pods are ephemeral. And this has implications for a number of things. So in this particular session, we are only going to talk about the network implications. So when a pod is launched, it's assigned a unique uh, IP address, and this allows the intercommunication with other pods and the other components within the cluster. But if pods are ephemeral, then that means the list of IPs um, that are assigned for any replicas will be continuously changing. In short, if you are sending a traffic directly to the pods, that's going to be a recipe for instability. So how do you resolve this issue so that your external and internal traffic can reach your microservices in a stable way? And that's where your services come in. So basically, uh, we are not supposed to send the traffic directly to the pods because uh, there are, you know, these, these IPs that are assigned to your pods can keep changing. Like, let's say, for example, uh, we have created a deployment and the deployment has created certain pods. Now, for some reason, a pod goes down and a new pod is created. So the IP will change, right? So now you won't be able to access that pod uh, using the old IP. You will need to make use of a new IP and that becomes very complex. So to resolve this issue, we have your services. Okay, so services provides us with a stable network abstraction layer in front of your pods and they have a stable IP address. So instead of hitting the pods, we would hit the services which has a stable IP address and they are associated with a specific um, uh, workload using label selectors and they help you to proxy your traffic to your pods that are attached to. But what about the continuously changing list of pod IP addresses? Well, when a service is created, um, resources known as endpoint slices are automatically created in the background. So whenever we create a service, there's a, some, there's a component called endpoint slice that gets created in the background. Now, each endpoint slice has a list or a table of endpoints containing a subset of pod addresses along with the nodes where this pod is um, uh, running. So in this case, if you see, just for the sake of example, so I have the address, the node where the pod will be running and the zone and likewise I have different, different things. So services will track this list of your corresponding endpoints. So it will constantly have the updated information on pod IPs to send the traffic to your respective pod. So even if this uh, IPs of these pods are changing this endpoint slice keeps on uh, keeps getting updated automatically and that's how your services are able to uh, send your traffic to the respective pods. Now that is a more low level understanding of how traffic gets uh, sent from your services to the pods. Now let's look at some of the different types of services that we have. So I'm going to focus on three uh, types. So we have the cluster IPs, we have the node ports and then we have the load balancer services. Um, so in the last session, if you remember, we looked at your node ports example. So we created a service and we use the node port to expose our ports to the internet. Now let's you know talk about each of these services one by one. So let's start with the cluster IPs. Now this is the default service type. So if you're not specifying uh, what type of service you want to create then cluster IP is what uh, gets created. So with this setting in place your service is assigned an IP address that is only reachable within the cluster. So basically if you want to make your pods internal 
So if you have your microservices that should only receive or serve internal traffic only, then you can go with your uh, cluster IPs, right? So under this, um, users for uh, you know basically you won't be able to access the pods from the browser from outside the cluster. So the traffic is limited only within the cluster, and um, uh, you know you can you can access the uh, containers from one pod to another pod, but not outside the cluster. The next we have is the node port service, and like I said, this is what we used in the last session. So with this service, a physical port is opened up on the underlying node or the nodes where the pod is running. So let's say I have uh, four pods and these four pods are running on four different nodes. So whenever I use a node port, there is a port that gets opened up on the respective node machines. So the Kubernetes control plane will assign this port value from a specific range. So in this approach, you can also set up an external basic load balancer that will proxy your traffic to the open ports on your node. So basically, whenever you want to expose your pods um, to the internet, node port is one such option. So as a uh, user, we will hit the port number that is open on the node machine. So the node port basically opens up that port number and the request will go to the node port service, which in turn will send it to the respective uh, pods for us. The last one we have is your uh, load balancer service type. Now, your load balancer service type is well integrated with your cloud environment. And uh, if you are doing it on the AWS, it creates an elastic load balancer to proxy your incoming traffic to the relevant workload. So again, uh, with your load balancer service type, we are exposing the pods to the outside internet. So as a user, uh, we will be hitting the load balancer and the load balancer in turn will send it send the traffic to the respective pods so is that it are we good to go well not quite services have their own limitations for certain use cases so for starters they only operate at the fourth layer of your network osi model so they can only handle tcp and udp traffic and there will most certainly be scenarios where you want to handle HTTP traffic coming into your cluster, right? So what happens when the number of microservices in your environment starts to increase? Well, uh, do, you, do you keep opening up uh, node ports? Now that's not a secure approach because this will simply increase the attack surface area as you open multiple entry points to your cluster. Uh, well, then does that mean uh, we keep creating external load balancer services? Not exactly. If you create an ELB for every microservice in your environment, you will quickly ramp up your cloud bill. So, you know, your your cost will shoot up and, um, um, you know, if, if you start creating a load balancer for each of your pods, like in this case, I have five pods and if you think of creating five load balancers, then that's uh, way too much of cost for us and believe me that's not something that you want to do and this is exactly where we have your ingress resource so the ingress resource allows you to handle external traffic uh, which is coming into your cluster and this it operates at the seventh layer of the network osi model meaning it handles your http and https traffic now how does your ingress operate exactly so ingresses allow you to reduce the entry points into your cluster by creating a single point of entry using an external facing load balancer. So instead of creating multiple load balancers, we will create a single ingress based load balancer. Now, when a user hits this ingress controller, it will then proxy your incoming HTTP traffic to the different upstream services. So under this we will basically define different different rules and then for each of these rules we will have your respective services which in turn will send your traffic to the respective pods like let's say for example i have uh, um, four different um, uh, components right so let's say i have the example.com i have example.com slash home example.com slash app one and then example.com slash app two now, when I hit example.com, it should go to a set of pods. 
if I hit example.com slash home, it should go to another set of pods. So this is where we can make use of your ingress. Uh, so we will not be creating one load balancer for uh, one service. It's going to be a single entry point and then we make use of your routing rules. So as a user, if I hit example.com, my ingress will evaluate the routing rules and then it will forward the uh, request to the respective service which in turn will forward it to the respective pods. Likewise, if I run, uh, if I hit example.com slash home, it will route to the respective service, which in turn will send it to the respective pods. And the same thing applies to all of your uh, routes that you have defined in your um, ingress controller. So with this, you can create multiple uh, routing rules in the ingress so that it knows how to handle different requests and which upstream service it should forward the request to. As such, you can expose many of your micro microservices using, using cluster IPs. Using ingress in front of your service is operationally more efficient. It is cost effective, scalable, and also it is very secure. Now, the last thing I want to touch on uh, is the ingress controller. So like other controllers, this component will help you to regulate the state of your ingress uh, resources. Now, generally, it is recommended to make use of the AWS load balancer controller to manage the creation of your ELBs like your application load balancer and your network load balancer. Now, in the next session, I will be showing you an example for your ingress controller, but that's all I have for this session. So just to recap, um, we spoke a bit about your services. We looked at the different types of services we have. So we have the cluster IP. Uh, which is used when you want to have internal traffic only you don't want to expose your pods to the outside internet then you have your node port where uh, if you want to open up ports on the node machines and you want to expose your pods to the outside internet we can make use of your node port and then finally we have the load balancer where if you want to uh, make use of your load balancer like elb to uh, process your request we can make use of your load balancers and then we also spoke a bit about your ingress um, uh, resource uh, where you know we basically define your routing rules and based on the rules based on the routing that we try to access your ingress will take care of uh, sending that request to your respective service which in turn will send it to your respective pods if you found this video helpful please give it a like share and subscribe to the channel hit that bell icon to get notified whenever i upload new content if you have any feedback or any queries, please leave them in the comment section below. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.